Hey there, fellow classic comic collectors. As always, I'm Scott Harris King, and today it's finally back. I know you thought it disappeared into the ether, but nope. It's back. It's the trading challenge rounds four and five. So it's a little confusing. I know uh, last time we were about to jump into round three. Um, that's done. Uh, but there's also was a, a round four that happened. So what we're going to be starting now is round five. So basically, uh, I did a number of trades during round three. One of them was quite complicated, and that trade ended up spilling into round four. But first, let's start right off with the list from last time. Here's what we ended up with last time uh, for our final list of comics going into round three. Just as a reminder of how this all works, it's the Great Dollar Bin Trading Challenge. I started with 20 books that I pulled out of dollar bins. I'm trying to trade all the way up to get an All-Star Comics number 8. Along the way, anytime I drop under 20 books, I can fill those empty slots with more dollar bin finds. So this combines my two favorite things, making trades with other collectors and searching for deals in dollar bins. And my sincere hope is that along the way I can find all sorts of cool books that I can then trade to you people who need them. In return, you just trade me whatever stuff you have that's worth the like amount of money that you don't care about. That way you get the books you want. I don't care what I get in because I'm trading it all back out. The only thing I'm going to take out of this is the all-star number eight at the end of this. I'm not keeping anything else for myself along the way. No matter how cool it is, I'm not keeping it. So anything that comes in goes back out. Anything I add to the trading kitty stays in there and goes out to you guys. Um, so far, I've been having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I had a lot of things going on in my life, so it took me a little while to get around to this because I had some other things I had to prioritize. But we're finally here. And of the 20 books we had last round, uh, nine of them are out the door. We ended last round with a fair market value of $1,085. Now let's take the list down and let's put up the list so you can see the books that were traded out. Here they are, and I'm gonna go over the trades right now. Uh, three deals, but one of them was super complicated. So let's just start with the simplest deal first. And um, real simple, I traded away the Iron Man 118. Now that's the first repeat book and you may remember in the first round there was an Iron Man 118 in the starting group. I trade that out. I got another one back in a later trade and then I traded this one out. The Iron Man 118 and the Avengers number 100. I traded the pair of those with Kyle. For this right here is Showcase number 73, the first appearance of the Creeper. It's a nice solid mid-grade copy. Um, I would have this uh, at a 6.5. It wants to be a 7. I'm not sure it gets there, but it's it's a really nice sharp copy. First appearance, key issue, Ditko on the art. Um, this is just exactly the kind of book that I want to get in my trading pool, get these first appearances, these keys. Um, so I was really happy to get this. Um, and the books I trade away, of course, were really cool. First Appearance of Rhodey and then Avengers 100 with uh, the classic Barry Windsor Smith art. Avengers 100, one of my favorite comics. I just love the, the, the cover, Barry Smith cover with the yellow frame. But uh, very happy with this trade. Thanks very much, Kyle. And uh, then the next, the next trade um, that happened, I traded with Roger Metarog. And I traded away the X-Men 129. So that's, of course, a big double key. That's a book that has the first appearance of Kitty Pryde, the first appearance of Emma Frost. That was a book that had been in my private collection after I found it in a store for 50 cents. Um, but to show everyone how seriously I'm taking this challenge, I put it in the Kitty and I traded it to Roger and... Uh, this is exactly how it's supposed to work. He wanted a 129, didn't want to pay the high prices. He had some books in his collection that he didn't care about that were worth some money, and so we made a deal. Now he's got this great key, and I've got some more new cool stuff to show you. And he traded me two different lots that are going to be on the new list. The first is a lot of X-Men issues highlighted by this here. 
It's X Men 221, newsstand edition, first appearance of Mr. Sin Mr. Sinister. It's a nice mid grade copy. Um, Roger had it at a six. Um, I want to say it's higher than that, but he's probably right. It's got um, a little bit of a ding on the spine here, um, but still a really nice, really nice uh, mid grade copy. Again, and it is a newsstand. Um, there's two others in this X Men lot. There's also this here. It is X-Men Volume 2, number 8. Again, a newsstand edition, and now we're getting into 1992, I think. So newsstands, definitely much harder to find at this point, even with a book with this high print run. It's X-Men number 8. This is the first appearance of Belladonna. And here we have X-Men number 53, Volume 2, number 53, first appearance of Onslaught. So that's a really cool lot of X-Men books, but that's not all. That was only half of what I got from Roger in exchange for the X-Men 129, and the other half is right here. It's Sunfire and the Big Hero 6, complete run 1, 2, and 3, first appearance of Big Hero 6, first appearance of Baymax, first appearance of Hero, first appearance of Honey Lemon. So uh, obviously Baymax, really popular cartoon. The versions in the cartoon are different than these, but um, this is a book uh, that had a really low print run. Um, not an easy thing to find. Really, really nice copies. Um, so very excited to get this in. Full run of Sunfire and the Big Hero 6. So that brings us to the big third trade, the big complicated trade that encompasses both rounds one and round two. Again, with Kyle. Thanks very much for these trades, Kyle. And we got some classic pre-code horror coming in. And the way this trade works is some of my previous videos, um, not my actual trade videos, but other videos I've been doing, I've been showing uh, occasionally books that I'm pulling out and I'm like, oh, this was a dollar bin find. And so when I get some free space in my trading challenge, uh, I'll be adding that later. But right now we don't have space for it. So this is going to go in the wait to the waiting pile, eventually going to be the trading challenge. Kyle was interested in some of those books. Um, so what we ended up doing was we traded first for some books that were on the list. And then once those were off the list and there were some empty slots, I put the new books into those empty slots and then we traded for those as well. So that's the round four that I was talking about was the books that uh, I slipped into the lot, into those empty slots after the first round of trading um, and then traded. So what did, what did we trade? So for the books that are on the list, the other six they see on the list that are crossed out, uh, those have all been traded. So the... Um, the Hit Comics 53 is gone. The uh, Rye number one is gone. The G.I. Joe multi-pack is gone. The Amazing Spider-Man 54, that's gone. Um, basically, all the other ones that are crossed out, those are all gone. And once those six books were traded, um, then there were some new books to put in there, um, which, of course, I don't have to show you because I've already sent them to Kyle. Some of the books that um, ended up being traded, is that was a, there's a low-grade Fly number two, um, Simon Kirby, uh, there was um, a low-grade uh, Tomb of Dracula 12, second appearance of Blade. There was um, uh, another, a sec another copy of Megaton number two. There was one of those in the first lot and, and a couple others as well. So all told, there was a dozen or so books that went out. Uh, and so what did we get in return? Two big, big pre-code horror books, low-grade both complete, both still somehow have the covers attached, but low grade. I have what I'm calling a 1.5 copy of this pre-code horror classic, Tales of Terror, number one, with a great horror cover. Um, there's actually two versions of this. Uh, there's what we'll call the nip slip version, where there's some more explicit nipple drawing on here. That's apparently the rarer version. Here's a tamed down version. Um, Tales of Terror number one, not an easy book to find. Again, great pre-code horror. And then, even cooler than that, with a great pre-code horror cover, it's Fantastic Fears number one. 
uh, or technically number seven, but then technically number one. So this was at a time when a lot of um, publishers wouldn't start with the first issue because they they didn't like doing first issues because they felt like the higher numbers gave readers the confidence that the series was going to be good, right? So the first issue was numbered seven, and then there was a number eight, and then they started, then they switched the numbering, the next issue is number three, and then they continued on, and it lasts long enough so that there's another number seven. So there's two issue sevens, but this is the first one. It's actually issue the first issue of the run. So it's number seven slash number one. Just look at this great witch puppet cover. Really fantastic. Um, so those were the trades, but... Uh, we took six books off the board in that trade, and we only got two back, which means there's four empty slots. And I put in some real bangers here. Put in some of the some of the biggest books yet, um, including one that's that's just as big as the X Men 129 in terms of value. So what did I put in? Let's take a look. Four books coming into the pool. All dollar bin finds from me. First off, it's Star Slayer number two. Here's another repeat book in my initial batch. There was a Star Slayer number two. Here's another copy. Um, it is a nice copy. Um, I would say as it currently sits, it's maybe an 8.5. It has a lot of non-color breaking sort of wrinkles or bends on the cover. I think if this were pressed, I don't think it would get a 9.8, but I think... Um, I think it could probably be pressed up to a 9.2 maybe. It's really a nice copy. Very nice. First appearance, of course, of the Rocketeer. Um, it was foolish of me to put a backing board on here because the back cover has a tremendous, tremendous Rocketeer cover showing his first appearance by the great Dave Stevens. This book is really blown up. Um, back Way back in April of last year when I first put a copy in here. I was at, it was at $15. Now it's at 50, uh, because there's been a movie announcement. Uh, and also the book's almost 40 years old now. And so people are, there's a whole new wave of collectors that are really getting into collecting David Stevens stuff. A lot of his covers are going crazy. And so it's in that sweet spot where between the hype and the realization of just how important this comic is, it's really gone up a lot. Um, and, uh, I have, more copies so we'll be talking about this book more in the future um the short version is uh, just a couple years ago just before the pandemic 2019 my store my lcs had a big sale uh it was 100 comics out of they had all their dollar bins but it was 100 comics for 30 dollars. so if you bought 100 they were just 30 cents each and when i got there the first box was a whole long box of star slayers and i ended up pulling about 15 copies of star slayer 2 out of there so i got them for 30 cents each um so i still have a lot of other things to put into the trading kitty besides star slayer number twos uh but um going forward we'll expect to see some more of these in the future because it's kind of going to be my bread and butter particularly since during the pandemic the last two years i haven't had a chance to really get out much to look in dollar bins i haven't been to any shows that's really put a crimp in that aspect luckily i have um some saved up from a couple years of searching before i started this challenge so we still have some extra stuff to put in including these other books here's a book that's really taken off it's giant size chillers number one the first appearance of lilith the daughter of dracula now this book is um, not as nice as I originally thought it was. It, it looks, when you got it in the bag here, it looks like a nice mid-grade. Um, but uh, unfortunately, there's some water damage and staining on the back cover. Uh, the staining actually goes in a few pages as well on the back. So despite how nice it looks, I think technically it's probably only about a 3.5. It does have some wrinkling as well, just um, overall. Uh, so I can't really put it above a 3.5. This is a book that um, nice copies are fetching hundreds of dollars now. So um, in this grade, uh, I'm conservatively putting it 50. And if nobody trades for it, I think that's fine because the way this is going up, uh, if nobody takes it at 50 next time around, it might be 75. So um, that's the second book I added. But here come a couple real big ones. You ready for this? Here we go. It is blip number one, 
first appearance of Mario in comics. So blip number one, it's actually a nice copy. It's got a little color breaking, tiny color breaking crease up here in this corner. Um, it's got a couple spine stresses, but honestly, I mean, I'm calling it a seven. I think it's closer to an eight actually. And uh, this is a book where high grade copies, raw high grade copies are now commanding 200 plus. In some cases I've seen raw um, high grade copies on eBay go for 200, actually sell for 200. Um, so, you know, since I'm calling this a seven right now, um, I'm pricing and my, my trade ask on this is gonna be 140. But um, this is a book that uh, I pulled just a, just a couple years ago out of a dollar bin just because it was so weird. I, I love seeing Marvels that I've never um, seen before. And it has the thing right here that says new from Marvel Comics. So I picked it up just, just out of uh, this curiosity. And all of a sudden it's, it's blown up the last year. So now if you're a video game fan, a Mario fan, whatever, um, not an easy book to find. But here it is, blip number one. And then finally, sliding into the top spot on the list, it's a really, really nice copy of Marvel Premiere number 28, the first appearance of the Legion of Monsters. We got uh, Ghost Rider, we got Werewolf by Night, we got Morbius, and we've got another muck encrusted mockery of a man. Um, this is a, a really nice copy. Um, I have it around an eight. I think eight's a fair grade for this. Uh, so it, it's just really sharp, really nice. Um, most of the dollar bin books that I'm adding here are ones that I've gotten within the last couple, five years. This one, I honestly don't remember when I got this. What I, what I can tell you is that I got it out of a dollar bin and, um, it was probably between 2000 eight and 2012 that's just the guess basically uh, you know when i was putting my ghost rider collection together back in the 90s i had a copy of this but at some point i read it i didn't like it it didn't seem essential to my to my ghost rider collection so i trimmed my ghost rider collection and got rid of a bunch of his guest appearances including my complete run of champions i got rid of that got rid of this but then at some point i saw this in a dollar bin and so i was like well for a dollar you know um i'll pick it back up and uh Whew, wow high grade raw copies of this um are selling or have sold on ebay for 250 280 like huge figures so i'm i'm putting my trade ask on this at 175 Let's... oh hold on we're gonna hold the proceeding for a minute it's a message from me from the future uh, i'm interrupting because i recorded this video about a month ago maybe five weeks ago and since then there's definitely been some market changes so i've adjusted some of the pricing some of the stuff i was just talking about in terms of what i was asking is a little bit off both um, positive and negative so there's several books where i've actually lowered the amount that i'm asking and then there's one big book that i've significantly raised the amount and that's the one we were just talking about so that's why i wanted to cut in here so there have been a, a several higher grade copies of Marvel Premiere 28 that have just sold in the last few weeks. And they're re it's really going crazy. I don't know why. I don't know. If, I don't know. Maybe there's some movie speculation. It doesn't make any sense to me. But there was a, a raw copy listed as an 8.0 that sold recently for 263 Plus it was coming from England. So there's another $26 in shipping so it's basically 290 dollars now i took a close look at the scans for that i think part of the reason it went for so much is that i think it was actually a little undergraded look more like an 8.5 to me maybe even a nine on a good day uh so i think that's why people were responding but a cdc 8.5 also did just sell for 293 dollars now my copy is not quite that high I, again i have it at an eight and it's also not cgc'd but uh, I think based on the relative prices of the other sold copies that are nicer, um, I'm comfortable raising my ask from 175 to 225. There have been some lower grade copies. De copies are definitely lower than mine that I'm seeing sold listings for 150, 165. So um, 
I don't know what's going on in this book, but we are raising uh, my ask value of, for that book up to 225, which is great in terms of, it's just a nice psychological barrier. This is the first book we're going to have in the kitty with a value of over $200. So that's cool. Um, now there are some books, as I mentioned, that we've downgraded. The big one that I want to talk about is uh, Star Slayer. Um, that had a big bump. There was movie news and, it, and, and so that's what it went up. It had been, you know, when I first offered it, it was 15 this time around, as I said earlier in the video, I was asking for 50, but after the peak, it's gone back down, not as much as it was before. So I'm lowering that ask from 50 down to 35. And I'm actually going to have a whole video on Wednesday, just about star Slayer number two. And I have, uh, as I mentioned here, a tons of copies. I actually, since I recorded this, found two more copies of Star Slayer number two. So on Wednesday, uh, we're going to talk about an experiment I'm doing where I send a bunch of copies to CGC to see if we can add in some extra value and just to sort of test how bad CGC is right now. Um, but for the time being, this copy that is currently in the pool, uh, we're putting in at a $35 value. I also want to mention that I actually replaced the copy that was that I had shown earlier with a slightly nicer one. So the one that was in there had some non-color breaking bends, so I was grading around an 8.5 as a result. I took that out. I have copies that are nicer, so I want you guys to get the good stuff. So I put in a copy that's closer to the 9. 9.2 so uh, that's what we're doing we're 35 for that. There's a couple others that I lowered the ask value on as well just slightly. Um, most important one, I guess, would be the um, the Hulk, uh, the Hulk number one with the first appearance of Red Hulk. Now, this is a book that when I got it, it was really high. The copies were routinely selling for 110, 115. There was a brief period where that tanked, and there were several copies that only sold for around 55 or 60. That's bounced back up. I think those low sales were a bit of an anomaly, but there's been several just in the last couple of weeks, again, after I recorded the video, that have been around the $80 to $85 mark, so I've dropped the price accordingly. Last time it was a 110 I was originally asking 100 Now we're dropping that back down. Um, I also slightly tweaked the ask value for the set of uh, Sunfire and a Big Hero 6. I had listed at 100 initially. Now we're going to do 90 I think that's a little bit closer in line with some of the prices I've been seeing for sold sets. And also I actually saw a copy of issue one by itself in a store uh, just in the last couple days. Uh, they were asking 75 for that alone. So I think 90 for the set is a very reasonable ask, particularly in trade instead of buying it. So I just wanted to mention that because a lot of the figures I'm going to put the I'm going to put the uh, thing up on the board here so you can see the whole list, but the amounts are going to be uh, different in some cases than than what I just discussed. Okay, that's it for me for the future. Let's get back to me from the past and finish out the video. Let's actually put the whole new list up. So here's a new list. You can see the uh, the valuations that I have here, the fair market value now. Last time it was at 1,085, now it's up to 1,700, thanks to your generous trades. Uh, some of those trades was was were also great. Um, the big one of the Kyle, because I was able to consolidate so many books for just a couple, which opened up a bunch of slots, so I could put in these high value books, like the Blimp one and the Marvel Premiere 28. Um, so these are what the asking is gonna be. Um, and just to go through the whole list now, in case you missed it previously, I want to show them all off. Here we are. It's Lone Wolf and Cub, number one, featuring um, a cover by Frank Miller. Um, classic, classic comic. Young Romance, 172. Uh, it's one of the 64 big pages, giant size romance issues. Really nice copy of Micronauts number one. This is the Whitman variant. You can tell by this and by this. Uh, not a reprint, so it's actually kind of um, a rarer variant. Speaking of rare variants, Ice Cream Man number 23. Convention exclusive variant, limited to 500 copies. A set of two Golden Age classics. It's a Red Rider... And the numbers are not on here, but it's like 68 and 86. It's in the list below. A couple classic issues of Red Rider. One's from 1948, I think. The other one's from 1950. Some great, great Golden Age art. Black Panther number one. I believe this is the first appearance of Okoye. 
look for this book to to go up when the second one second um, black panther comes out star slayer number two we talked about this already first appearance of the rocketeer giant size chillers number one the first lilith static number one the first appearance of static action comics 226 one of the first postcode issues i think this is from uh it's march of it's either march of 55 or 56 it's one of the first postcode issues so it might be 55 great colors on this dc issues from this period are notoriously difficult to find Usagi Ojimbo number one, the summer special. A great book, a great wraparound cover that I can't really show you. Showcase 73, the first appearance of the Creeper. X-Men lot that consists of X-Men 221, the first Mr. Sinister. X-Men volume two, number eight, the first Belladonna. And X-Men volume two, number 53, the first Onslaught. A lot of the complete run of Big Hero 6. Sunfire and the Big Hero 6, numbers 1, 2, and 3, with the first appearance of the Big Hero 6. Whoops, I snuck, snuck the next one in there as well. Because the next one is Hulk, number 1, the first appearance of Red Hulk. Tales of Terror, number 1. Blip, number 1, the first appearance of Mario. What if, number 10, first Jane Foster as Thor. Again, a big book um, with the movie coming out. Fantastic Fears, number seven slash number one. And Marvel Premiere 28, the first appearance of the Legion of Monsters. There we have it. Um, I'm gonna have the list. Hit me up with any trade offers. I'm gonna have my email in the description below. You can email me with trade offers if you wanna do it that way. Um, it's probably better to, to do that one-on-one um, -on -one via email. I'll keep the running list of which trades have happened and which trades haven't. This will be available um, for a couple weeks or so. Uh, there's some other trade venues that I go on, um, places like the CGC forms, for instance, where they require you to be exclusive if you're gonna offer something there, you can't offer anywhere else. So I'm gonna have this trading window up here for a week or two, and once it dies down here, then I'll probably close the trading here and I'll move this over to the CGC forums and I've got I've had some success on Reddit in the past. So we have some avenues to, to pursue more trades, but I wanna give you guys the crack at it before I go to those random strangers because I wanna get these books out to all of you, get you the cool stuff you want. I'm always trying to consolidate these upwards uh, we haven't quite broken that $200 barrier for an individual issue, but I'm really hoping, particularly with these pre-cohort horrors, hoping I can combine those two, trade both of them in one lot for one book that's, you know, $275, $300. And I want to start getting in some of these bigger sort of keys, um, which will be trading chips to sort of ladder us up. Um, once we get two or three of these sort of mid-tier keys, that'll give me the opportunity to then trade you know bundle those for one bigger key so and then i'll be able to trade it to you guys so that's what that's what we're trying to do here just keep laddering it up get more and more cool stuff for you i'm going to continue whenever i can to search those dollar bins and i still have another 15 bucks or so different things uh, from dollar bins and not just 15 copies of star slayer 2 but i have a bunch of different stuff still in reserves for any empty slots, but let's get those trades going. Let me know what you think down below. I'm excited to see what you think of all these cool new books coming in and um, I'll see you next time.